Hi everyone, welcome to the next short video on the request models. This time we will be using a case study to differentiate between these two request models. We will see what exactly happening behind the scene and for this case study we will be using a Java Spring Boot application. So yeah, let's start. So before starting the actual demo of the application, let me first make it clear that what I have done so far. I have created three applications as of now. These are th all three are Spring Boot application. What I have done is I have created one producer application which is showing some kind of delay. To simulate that kind of delay, I will be using a debugger where I will purposely stop the request from the consumer and uh, we'll see how exactly it will behave on the consumer side i have created two consumer using two different request model one is based on the thread per request model which is actually using tomcat as the embedded server and another consumer i have created using the event loop to simulate that i have used the spring web flux so that i can use the netty as in uh, embedded server by default so let's now jump into the actual demo so let's start with the producer application first of all so this is also a spring boot application uh, it's a very simple producer where it's actually returning a string this is a simple plain string here is the data so whenever a consumer calls the api the produce data on the producer side it will return here is the string in the response so i can show you that this is uh, this is where I have put a debug point so that I can purposely block the call from the consumer. So as of now, I can just proceed with it and you can see here, this, this is the data that I am getting from the producer itself. Now, as a demo for the thread per request model, I will be using a consumer, which is actually a Spring Boot application again, but uh, here is the API that I will be calling. And this particular API internally calls uh, the producer service to get that plain string now this particular spring boot application which is currently running on the uh, tomcat uh, i have restricted the number of uh, threads as of now to four only so these all request processing threads are currently in wait state so whenever i am i will be putting any kind of request on this consumer service then these threads will change the state from wait to running status so now first of all let's see how exactly i can put that request so this is the api yeah so here you can see that one of the thread out of those four went into the running status in the consumer side okay so i'll be continuing with that and i will be stopping in the producer itself so now this consumer thread which is not doing anything on the consumer code is actually waiting on the response from the producer side so here you can see the status of this thread went to running status now the other three are still waiting so i believe i can send more requests so this is the duplicate request of the first one i will be sending the same thing so here also i am getting a debug so now this also ran into the running status now let's do the same thing for the third one also same one this also went into the running status now i'm left with only one thread which is in waiting status so i can hit one more request and yes now all the threads which are available to process the request are now in running status I cannot utilize these threads now. So suppose there is another API on the same consumer which is process which is not depending on any application or maybe it's not depending on any of the application which is having a delay. Even in this case, I cannot consume this application, uh, this API because all the threads are still waiting. So let's do that thing. So this is the process. If I hit that, that also went into the wait state. So now there is nothing to process. In this case, all the threads are actually waiting on the producer side, which is causing lots of delays. And that's where all the consumer are blocked. That is why we call this kind of application as a blocking application, because it's depending on other application. 
and which can introduce any amount of delay it can be a database it can be any file processing or any other microservices as well but in all the cases any minute delay can cause the thread on the consumer side to get into the block status because they are not doing anything so now let's see how exactly we can solve this problem is in the event loop model so we saw how exactly the thread per request based model application was creating problem where if one of the api was dependent on any other service or any other application in those cases that api can block the whole application your application might not be able to process any further request to mitigate that kind of problem i have created this another application this is again spring boot application but this time this is using spring web plug and this currently using the netty as the embedded server by default so i have created this api this api again is dependent on the producer which is actually i'm going to block using a debugger and then we'll see if any further requests land on this particular api will that get blocked or not and congruently if any request lands on this particular api will that block, block or not because this particular api doesn't depend on any other any other application so in Ideally, uh, we should be able to get the response out of this particular uh, API. So let's see. So I will first start this particular application in debug mode, which is. So I have started this application and this is the particular thread, which is the event loop, uh, which will be handling all of our requests. Okay, so now let me send request to this particular API. And just land it here on the controller application method and it now went to the producer service now you can see the thread has been blocked if you see the postman that is still waiting for the response if i send another request on the same api that will also get blocked right it went to the producer and producer actually blocked this response so as you know i just created only one thread so this particular thread is responsible to handle all the requests. As of now, I have sent two requests. Both of them got blocked. So in thread per request model, there there must be two thread at least uh, to handle two separate requests. But here, only one single thread is handling those requests. And it's still in the running status because uh, it's continuously running and it's taking care of all the requests and sending it to the uh, workers or appropriate handlers. Now let's uh, do one more thing. I will send the request to this particular process API and let's see what will be the response. So it's landing on this uh, in thread per request model that got blocked also because there was no thread available to handle the request now it's the same thread you can see the same thread is handling the same request also you can forward it and you can get the response here so and you can notice here that uh, even if my other threads are blocked uh, i can still use my application so this way if your application is dependent on any other application file processing system maybe database your application won't get blocked in any of the scenario because it's delegating all those handling to other mechanism and they will actually call back your event loop once the output is ready from that that application so let me now clear the debugger so that i get the response of other yeah so i get the response of other threads now the conclusion is if you have very uh, dependent kind of application it, where it's taking lots of time on the dependent application the response time is majorly derived by the, by the dependent application then you should consider using the event loop or the reactive application which is not blocking any of its thread um, because of the other application uh, but if you have very cpu intensive application which is uh, running on your service is cpu only then i would recommend that you should use a thread per request model but any of the application can get blocked in few scenarios even the event loop can block also if you if you run an application which is cpu intensive and it's taking it's blocking your event loop then also 
the event loop can block but uh, that is very rare scenario most of the application block because of the other application rather because you have control on your application rather than others right so yeah that's it so i hope you like this session uh, see you in the next video thanks for listening